Sir, I rise to speak on the discussion on parliamentary journey of 75 years, starting from Sangvidhan Sabha, which has not yet been discussed in details at all in the House. Achievements, experience, memories and learnings. Sir, this is the last day of the current parliament house. And this is possibly the last agenda we are going to discuss. So on the day of the nostalgia, we feel a flood of memories. The past and pledge to deserve our best democratic traditions for the future. That the journey began just after independence with the covering of the Sangvidhan Sabha or Constituent Assembly, the list of members who registered and presented their credentials on the discussion held on December 9, 1946, from Bengal had been a vertible role of honor. Many speakers took part. I will just remember their role. It read as follows. One, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar from Bengal. Mr. Sarat Chandra Bose. Mr. Kiran Sankar Roy. Mr. Frank Reginald Anthony. Mr. Shatta Ranjan Bakshi. Dr. Prafullo Chandra Ghosh. The list included another 25 members from Bengal who took part on this debate for the final publication of the Indian Constitution. So the proceedings of the Constituent Assembly would have been very dull, Dr. Ambedkar said in his final speech in the Sambhidhan Sabha, if all members had yielded to their party lines or party discipline in all its rigidity, then it could be a gathering of yes men only. But few persons raised their voice of their own going out of the placed resolution, which there were rebels rising to the lent qualified support to Dr. Ambedkar's motion to pass the Constitution, one of these rebels was Hari Vishnu Kamath suggested that we the people of India. And that was inducted in the Constitution with the proposal of Hari Vishnu Kamath, we the people of India, had come to the end of a long journey, which was, however, the beginning of a longer, a more arduous, and a more hazardous one. True to the Indian genius, he noted, our struggle, our awakening, began with a spiritual renaissance, which was pioneered by Ramakrishna Paramahamsadev, Swami Vivekananda, and Swami Dayananda. In the wake of those spiritual leaders came there, political renaissance and the cultural renaissance of which the torch bearers, the leaders, the guides were Lokmanna Tilak, Aurobindo and Mahatma Gandhi and last but not the least Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Today we once again pay our tribute to those great leaders of our freedom struggle that the journey of a next 75 years, the covering of a 17th Lok Sabha in this historic house, before moving from an old building to a new one, we need to understand the true meaning of the name of our country, India, that is Bharat. We are happy and comfortable with both the names that we want to reiterate here also. 
sir, while seeking inspiration from achievements and memories of the past, that is the main learning we must take for the future. We who currently in the opposition rededicate ourselves to defending democracy against authoritarianism and commit ourselves to building our new India on the strong foundations of secularism and federalism. One of our colleagues, Sugata Basu, now he is the head of the Harvard University, was MP in the 16th Lok Sabha, delivered a beautiful speech on this subject, which I remember very much. Sir, India has a parliamentary system of government. We are watching it since last 75 years. The Union of Parliament is the supreme legislative body of India. Our parliamentary democratic system stands upon the principles of communal harmony, secularism, and unity of the country. Ethos of our constitution vibrated as after the constitution was passed, unity in diversity. The spirit is to be kept maintained. <clears throat> India is a country which almost believes on principles of nana bhasha, nana mot, nana poridhan, bibi dher maje dekho, milan mohan. This is the unity in diversity. This spirit was reflected from the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, and that, is, that should be reflected so long we remain in the country. We speak ek jati, ek pran ekota, ei desh samadir vidhata. This country is godly to us. And this is one country, one feeling should percolate to the hearts of the every Indian. We believe the principles of unity amongst Hindu, Bodho, Sikh, Jaino, Parshi, Muslim, and Christian. Somewhere we are finding this idea is not being implemented in all parts of the country. Indian Parliament sir, is famous for his ornamental speeches, records of debate and discussions since last its inception. Spirit of brotherhood and feeling of respect always used to maintain between one party MPs to the other parties, from which we are now lacking. This system is vanished. Prime Minister was expressing no collapse from the opposition. I was hearing. But the system has been collapsed, and this is not a good sign which we are going to face. Sir, Indian Parliament at different occasions and in different era have proven that how much powerful can Indian Parliament become at the time of crisis of nation. Whole Parliament stands by India or Bharat. Earlier, Prime Minister, sir, of all times, responded to the questions raised by the members. But somehow, we are not finding this since last 10 years. Why it is happening? I am here, sir, last 12 Lok Sabha. I have interacted with so many Prime Ministers in question hours. But this time, I am not finding it. I hope this will be reflected at the new house. Continuous process of discussion in connection with international and very important national issues were part of regular parliamentary practices. Nowadays, it is totally invisible, sir. Indian parliament have shown their unity amongst themselves when China or Pakistan invaded India. Hotel Bihari Bajpayee praised Indira Gandhi by pronouncing her as Ma Durga at the time of war in Bangladesh, we still remember it. There are exemplary precedents like this in the history of Indian Parliament. Opposition praising treasury benches, treasury benches opposition, these were reflected in the House on many occasions, on several times, but which is now being totally invisible. Keeping faith upon international solidarity and brotherhood, our parliament has expressed solidarity with many other countries who have fought 
for their independence. Sir, I was first elected in 12th Lok Sabha as Trinamool Congress candidate. That time, our party leader, Mamata Banerjee, it was the first time a new political party entered into the parliament. And that time, she raised her voice in parliament for one-third reservation of in Lok Sabha and assembly. The incident we still remember. She caught one MP by neck when she was going to hear the bill which was placed, which was going to be placed on the floor of the house. Now Sonia Ji has also written a letter to Honorable Prime Minister to take it up. Sir, our demand would be that in the next current new Lok Sabha building, parliament building, let this Women Reservation Bill be tabled and let it be passed without further delay. Let it be initiated with a positive direction by which this parliament can start, can initiate its journey with a very positive outlook. Sir, all of government by one vote, we have witnessed it, sitting on the floor of the house. And we have seen the power of the parliament. How peacefully the voting pattern went on. And just next to me, Chandra Shekharji was sitting. He asked me, Sudhip, what is the result of the vote? I said, Bajpayee has been defeated by margin of one vote only. He said it to me, oh ho, if I had the idea, I could have voted for Bajpayee, by which the vote pattern could have been different. So these are the memories which haunt me always. Sir, let the present house run with a positive direction. Common principle of parliamentary democracy is that house belongs to the opposition. I tell it at the all-party meeting, so whenever Honorable Speaker convinced, that in a parliamentary democratic system, house should belong to the opposition. But nowadays, bills are being passed without debate or discussion. It is not a good precedent. Both sides are to be more objective in their approach, in their outlook. And when a house can run properly, if the ruling party takes a positive decision, then only it becomes possible. Otherwise, it is not possible for the opposition to run the house in a proper manner. The GST declaration being celebrated by convening midnight parliament session. It was held to make it historical, but many important and extraordinary situations prevailing in the country are not being allowed to raise and discuss in the House. Sir, brute majority in parliament by one political party at this present parliament reflects its arrogance is not desirable. What my long experiences say that if brute majority persists, they are in a mood to gag the voice of the opposition. It is neither desirable nor it is supported by all the members. So we will approach to the ruling party to make themselves restrained the coming sessions. Long since it is proven, parliament session must reflect with more positivity and become as result-oriented. But in few last sessions or in few last years, this parliament session is not becoming result-oriented. That is a part of sorrow. The attitude of the ruling party of parliament can make it viable and functioning. They will come, sir, if this way runs that people will start losing their faith in the parliamentary system of process. That what this parliament is going to give to us. And once people start losing their faith upon this parliamentary system, it is a very dangerous system. So, sir, we must try to remain more committed and faithful at the 75th year of Indian independence to see that parliamentary democratic system 
remains alive with its massive strength. Sir, we hope we are entering into a new parliament. Let all the system be approached, be focused, be presented, be ventilated in a positive manner. Whole country should feel the change from one building to other building will also carry some feelings, good sense of ideas prevail, and we each one become to the respectful to each other sections in a broader mind. So lastly, I must say the slogan that whatever manner country proceeds, we must say long live secularism and federalism. The federalism structure of the country is under big threat, where West Bengal is one of the major victims. I should take it up. We are trying our best to draw the attention of the government. And as a leader of a Trinamool parliamentary party in Lok Sabha, I should keep it record on record as mentioned. Sir, I repeat, no attempt is to be taken to create division in between India and Bharat. We firmly stand by both. Jai Hind, sir. Jai India. Jai Bharat.